Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. The lines let up. I need to take the call. Caller waiting for us. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I believe we have another caller on the line. How are you tonight, caller? Forrest, it's me, Roller Ricky. Oh, and Maxie's here too. Good to hear from you again. How are you both doing? Oh, we're good, man, thanks to you. You're like our guardian angel. That wouldn't be a bad look for you, Forrest. A little white wing halo number. Maybe something for the KFAM Halloween party. All right, everyone, let's calm down. Ricky, I'm just glad we could help you and Maxie. Is there anything else we can help you with, Ricky? Actually, I think I have some info that might help you. Oh? What's that? You see, man, uh, me and Jason know each other. You know each other? Yeah, we went to Gallus High and played on the football team together. He was a gnarly offensive linesman, and I was our star wide receiver. Runner Ricky, they called me. All right, and what does that have to do with tonight? Well, because George, the guy who drowned, he was on our team, too. Keep talking. What happened? We had our first team party on the night he drowned. He seemed like such a good dude. Ricky. Were you there when George drowned? No, man. Once the party turned, I beat feet out of there. Man, I remember George and his girl there. There was a whole lot of love, man. I could see it, you know? Ricky, please. What was her name? I never got her name, man. He just called her Bean. I didn't really know her before, or see her after that. Then what did she look like? Please, tell us anything you remember. <sighs> I just remember a pretty girl, man. I'm sorry. Ricky, you said the party didn't last long. What happened? We were... just having a good time, and then... the next thing I knew... everyone was running for their life. I looked up... and saw a goddamn whistling man in the trees. And I never ran so fast in my life. I ran straight home. Didn't know about George until next morning at school. I'm guessing it was whistling night, wasn't it? That the whistling man was just another kid. Yeah. I don't know how George died, but... Uh, I always felt like if anyone deserved to die that night, it should have been me. And... Uh, Ricky, it wasn't your fault. You're not a bad person. I know that now, ma'am. Took a long time to learn, but... Yeah, just thought I'd tell you all what I know. Thank you, Ricky. This helps. Thank you. You got it, man. Anyway, I think it's time for me and Max to free up your phone lines. Thanks for listening, man. I'll let you to it. Ah! Night, Ricky. All right, folks. Looks like we got a new lead in the case. If anyone has any info about this mysterious bean, please call in. If she was George's girlfriend back then, she's probably in her mid to late thirties now. Huh. Oh, we have another call coming in, but hang on. What's up, Peggy? Peggy? You're gonna want to take this call off the air. 
Who is it? Just do it. All right, folks, it's time for another track. Here's one to help you sit back and relax. We'll be right back after this. Come on, Forrest. Put some music on already. Uh, I hope this is good news, Peggy. Who have we got? Find out for yourself on line one. Hello? Forrest! I'm glad I got back through to you. Sounds like it's been a busy night, huh? Surprise! It's Leslie, our 911 operator leading the charge from Henderson to come save us. It's so good to hear from you. Are you okay? We're doing okay. Sarah and I are both happy to be headed back home. We're happy to have you too. I... Wait, Sarah? Oh, yeah, I mean Deputy Martinez. <laughs> anyway, we got back into radio range a little while ago. We've been listening in, but haven't been able to get through until now. Ever since you found Sheriff Matthews, it's only gotten worse. It's been a long night. Well, it shouldn't be too much longer now. I'm glad I got through to you. I wanted to let you all know what's going on. I made it to Henderson. Turns out somebody had cut the phone lines, and they had no idea what was happening. After I told them, well, their sheriff sent a goddamn squad back with me to stop this. That's great news! That's crazy about the phone lines, though. Do you think the whistling man cut them? I'm guessing so. I don't know how he... how she... how the whistling man did it. But that doesn't matter right now. Listen, we're coming in hot, but we need your help. I know Gallows Creek isn't a big town, but if we don't know where the whistling man is, we can't get him. Her. That's where you come in. You can count on us. What do you need? It might be a long shot, but here goes. The whistling man already called up a few times. I bet she calls again. We're still a little ways out of town, so if she calls, stall her. Buy as much time as you can for us to get in. And while you're talking to her, try to figure out where she is. We'll be listening in, so once her location is known, we'll head straight there and end this nightmare. I'll do my best. I know you will. Heck, I can see the headlines now. Forrest Nash's interview of a lifetime. Anyway, I'll radio the other cars and tell them the plan is a go. Hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be with our killer behind bars. Take care now. We'll see you soon, Leslie. Oh, thank God. It sounds like this is almost over. We're nearly through this. It's nice to think, Peggy, but I don't reckon Dawn is going to give up without a fight. She probably won't give up without a fight, no. But neither will we. Now, let's get you back into the arena, champ. Bringing you back live, now. Welcome back to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. The line is lit up, but before I get to our next caller, I just want to say, things are looking up. It's almost over, but for now... Let's bring in our next caller. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Hello, Forrest. This is John Hedges. I'm here with Casey. I wanted to give you an update on Jason. John! Is, is he gonna be okay? He's a fighter. He'll be fine. We've got him stabilized and resting in a bed. We're preparing to move him to the hospital. Thank you so much! If you hadn't been there, then... God, I don't even want to think about what would have happened. Of course, Casey. We're just happy he's okay. John, Casey, you two did all the work. Tell Jason to get well soon from us, whenever he's up for it. Well, why don't you tell him yourself? Is this Forrest? 
Jason, we meet at last. It's good to hear you, Jason. How are you? Oh, well, you know, I've got a hole in my stomach, and there's a knife in my leg, but John gave me something to take the edge off. So, I might feel even better than either of you. <laughs> take it easy until you get to St. Gabriel's. I will. But, uh, before that, I, I needed to call you. I'm guessing the Whistling Man is still out there? Yes, the Whistling Man's still out there. Why do you ask? You know something about the Whistling Man, don't you? Yeah. I do. Can we talk about what happened earlier? Go for it. We spoke to Roller Ricky not long after you were attacked. You spoke to Ricky? Was he... Is he alright? He is now. I mean, he was attacked earlier, but... This call came after. Hey, guys, I'm really sorry, but there's a call on the other line. I just need to make sure we don't have another situation brewing. You fill Jason in on what happened. I'll be right back. Sure, Peggy. Sorry, Jason. Uh, where was I? Ah, yep. Ricky's fine. You don't need to worry about him. That's a relief. He told us about George. Sounds like everything's finally coming out now. It's been tough to hold it all in. Sounds like you've been holding back about something awful, Jason. I'm part of the reason my best friend is dead, Forrest. And the few who knew about it said if I ever said anything, I'd find myself in jail for a long time. It was hell. And then the town just moved on, like it never existed. What happened that night? I went along with the stupid prank, that's what. Whistling night. Some of the guys on the football team had an idea for a way we could haze the newcomers. We decided to plan a party in the woods and have the whistling man crash it. It was stupid. We each had a role. I was the stabbed friend. At the party that night, I left the group for a second, met our whistling man pretended to get stabbed in front of everyone started an almighty panic those screams that was the last time I saw or heard George alive how did George die Jason I don't know I was playing dead but when I heard her scream Ricky mentioned a girl named Bean is that who you mean Bean Guess George did call her that. Yeah. He called her Bean. I heard her again tonight, Forrest. Her name was. M what? What happened? Are we still on air? No, no, we're not. Seems like the power is completely gone. How do we get it back on? I don't. Uh. Oh, we can use the emergency generator down in the basement. Ricky picked it up a while ago, in case you ever needed to do an emergency broadcast. An emergency broadcast? Emergency? You know, nuclear war, alien attack, broadcasting a serial killer's location to the top so we can end this nightmare? Bear point! It's in the storage area, in the far back corner, up on the wall. You might have spotted it earlier when you were digging around for all those tapes. It'll have a big red button. Just press that. Oh.
<sighs> Far back corner. Why is this station so big? That must be it. Boom! We've got power! The whistling man. I need to warn Peggy. Peggy, are you there? Are you... Peggy! I need to get back upstairs. Peggy, where did you go? No way. This can't be happening. A, a call. Did Dawn press the Peggy button? Did she want me to hit it on my end? Where's Peggy, Dawn? Have some patience, Forrest. It's almost the end of the night. Almost the end of the show. But it's not over just yet. Got a little time still. So let's make the most of it. What do you mean? Make the most of it how? Well... Huh? I thought we'd end tonight's Whistling Man special with a special guest. The one who started it all. Uh, let me take that out of your mouth and... You crazy bitch! Let me go! Welcome to the air, Mr. Teddy Gallows Jr. Wait. It's all gonna come out tonight, Teddy. Your daddy and his money saved you 20 years ago. But even if he crawled out of his coffin with all the money in the world... Wait, where the hell is Teddy? How, how are you talking to him if you're here with me? Because I'm not there with you, Forrest. I'm here with Teddy. And if he says where that is, well, he knows he'll get it. I can see you. You're standing right in front of me. Oh, I get it. You're wondering who's there at the station with you. Forrest Nash, let me introduce you and all of Gallows Creek to my boy, Henry Barrow. Yeah, your son? You mean you... Wait, that, that he... Yes, Forrest. He and I had a son. So there were two whistling men tonight. 
Of course. That explains how you were always able to get around town so quickly. And that's how you escaped the secret archives in the newspaper office. You don't think I've forgotten about that, Forrest? Rocking my sweet boy away like an animal. And Murphy, he, he was right, wasn't he? He did fight a man. He did. I taught my boy to never run away from a fight. Hang on. Did you say... Barrel? That... Are you... Let me just get this mask off. Damn uncomfortable thing. No wonder Mooney went crazy wearing this. There we go. Marie? Marie Campbell? George's old girl. Oh. Well, it sure has been years since I last saw. Oh, God damn it. Where are you going with all of this? Everyone's gonna know now what Teddy did. He killed George that night. This night. 20 years ago. Listen to me. You... Ah! You're gonna talk when I talk to you. And not a moment before. Meanwhile, Forrest, I'm gonna give you the chance to talk. You're gonna help me reveal what really happened to George all those years ago. Why should I help you? Why should I play any part in this? Because I think you believe in justice. You think this is justice? You have no goddamn idea, Forrest. These people... These people you've been trying to save, they were all in on it. They all knew George was murdered, but... Murdered? Uh, listen, I... I said you speak when you're spoken to. <sighs> now, I know you've done some good work tonight in piecing together what happened to George 20 years ago. And that's why I want you to interview us. Are you serious? You, you want me to interview you? Am I serious? After everything tonight, you really have to ask me if I'm serious. Uh... Do a good job. And hell. You might be the only one to leave here alive. I need to drag this out. If I can buy Leslie time to get back to Gallows Creek, and if I can find out where Marie is, then this can end. Teddy, we'll start with you. Just, uh, talk me through what happened that night. How did it start? How would I know? It was 20 years ago! Teddy, be honest with me or we're both going to die. Honest? Forrest, I'm trapped here with a psycho. <coughs> what the hell? God damn it. Okay. Our first team party was coming up. And when I saw the date it was scheduled for, I had an idea for a way we could prank the new guys. What made that night special? That was the night Mooney went missing. We couldn't pass it up. I was just surprised no one had ever thought to do it before. Wait. You mean this was the first whistling night? I... Uh, Keep talking, Teddy. We went up near Whistling Point. Uh, God, who was there? Me, Jason, and George, of course. Uh, but George didn't come alone. He brought Marie. And Roller Ricky, he was there too, wasn't he? Yes, Ricky was there too. Runner Ricky. Our wide receiver. I helped him off the bottle, you know. Because I'm a decent man. Is that so? Yes, it is. He came apart one day. Some people do. He had some issues. Wasn't stable. I didn't want him to hurt his chances in life. So, I helped him keep himself together. You. 
You were afraid he would talk about that knife, weren't you? Keep talking. About midway through the night, we put the prank into action. We looked up at the trees and saw Jason there, bloody, like he'd just been stabbed. And the whistling man, everyone screaming. George and I and Ricky, we got left behind. But Ricky was in on it too. I know he was. He and Teddy were as close as anybody. Teddy must have told him the plan. Did you ask Ricky if he knew or not? I didn't see any reason to. Why? Because Ricky phoned up earlier. He didn't know anything about it, Marie. What? He had no idea what was happening. He said he was as terrified as anybody. Isn't that right, Teddy? You didn't tell him, did you? Ricky never could keep his mouth shut. If we told him, he would have given everything away. But he... well... It doesn't matter. He didn't run his mouth enough to tell anybody about it afterwards. He's still guilty. It was just a stupid prank! How can you still say it was just a prank? Oh, come on! I... Oh, oh God! Damn it! You made George think Jason had been murdered. He thought his best friend was dead. And so tonight you stabbed him for real? It's the role he wanted to play. Jason's still alive, Marie. He was with a friend. We talked her through how to stop the bleeding and got him professional help just in time. Oh. Well, shame he didn't have the good sense to die earlier. He's gonna regret that. Enough about him. Me and George took off running, but somehow we got separated in the woods. I ended up near the bottom of Whistling Point, and when I noticed George wasn't with me, I panicked. And then, I don't know how he snuck up on me, but the Whistling Man grabs me. Scream, and he starts laughing, telling me it's, it's just a joke. I could stall for time here. Who was it, Marie? Who was the whistling man? I suddenly recognized it was Chuck. Chuck Brody was the whistling man, laughing away. But then he stops, and he's looking up at the top of Whistling Point. What was he looking at? <laughs> Teddy, what happened next? Nothing. I mean, it was just... Teddy! George fell off Whistling Point. Why'd he fall, Teddy? He just... You pushed him. You were up there. You were dressed as the Whistling Man, too, and... I didn't push him, goddammit! I just chased him up there, and... He kept backing up. When I saw he was about to go over, I reached out. That's what you saw. You liar! It's not my fault. He didn't know it was a joke. If he'd had any brains, he would have realized. Ugh. You bitch. No one's going to believe this. After all you did. If she's lying, why the cover up? My future was at stake, Nash. You know what it's like. People like us are bred for bigger things. I'm going to be the mayor of this town, of course. And then governor. And then, who knows? What happened that night was tragic. It should never have happened. But it was a mistake. It was just a stupid joke gone wrong. 
So my father sent Clive out to clean it up. Why should a blip ruin my future? George was a blip? That's an evil thing to say, Teddy. That's the way it is. My father agreed with me. You never found his body, Murray? I looked all night. Jogger found him the next morning, washed up on the river. And instead of telling the truth, she lied. She said she found him in the reservoir. Our jazz runner, Sandra Sharp. Everyone was in on it, Forrest. Even the coroner wrote a fake report. Said George was drinking. That he just got himself into trouble. And... I saw. I'm... I'm sorry. For all it's worth, Virginia didn't have much of a choice. She had a sick sister whose treatments she couldn't afford. She played along with the gallows to save her sister's life. And her own. Even... even still, she should have told the truth. I did my part. I tried everything I could think of. I even went to the newspaper, but no. That coward killed the story. We'll take care of Maurice Russell later. You've been through hell, Marie. I'm sorry. You've got no idea. It never should have started. He shouldn't have pushed my door off a cliff. He should have been punished. But it's coming to a stop. At least for now. Here, where George and I first met before he joined the football team. When right after he shot the winning throw. Wait a sec. You're at Gallows Creek High, in the gymnasium. That's right, Forrest. Not that it matters, but yes, we're here. Anyway, I think that about wraps up the interview with Teddy. So... Marie? Where? Oh my god. Peggy! Teddy? You've got to help me. I... Quiet. You'll talk more later. Now I have to talk to someone who mattered more than you ever did. It's been so long since I've seen your face. I worried you wouldn't come. Marie! Oh my god! I thought you... And here I was, thinking you'd forgot me. I'd never forget my own sister. Sister? Peggy, wh what's happening? Why are you even there? Wanna explain, Peggy? Earlier, while you were speaking to Jason, I got a call. Do you remember? Well, it was from Dawn. She said that my sister Marie was there that night George died. And that I should come to the gym for a reunion. And when you walked in, you found out... That my sister is the Whistling Man. Good to see you too, Peggy. Why didn't you tell me any of this? She said that it was my last chance to see my sister. I knew if I told you, you'd try to stop me or come with me when we need you on the radio. And I just... You should have said something. You should have told me. I know, okay? I should have. But I didn't imagine this situation then, so just... What happened to you, Marie? You just disappeared one day. Disappeared? I was thrown out, Peggy. I begged Mom and Dad to do something about what happened that night, but did they care? No, they told me to stay quiet. They only cared when they learned I'd been with George, and... and... Uh, Marie, I'm so 
sorry. I never knew. It's not your fault. Really, it's mom and dad I should be seeing right now. But since they're dead and gone, well... I'll have to settle for the next best thing. I... Wait. Is that why you went after that kid in the maze maze? Eugene Stein? Because his parents? That's right. Eugene's parents were there that night too. But they got themselves killed in a bus accident. And since only their child was left... Murray, please. Mom and Dad are gone, Peggy. Besides, you forgot me. Just like the rest. You forgot. Is there any way I can prove Peggy didn't forget Marie? Marie, Peggy never forgot about you. Keep your mouth shut. She kept a card from you. She she kept it here on her desk. What card? The card you made me for my eighth birthday. What does it say then? Happy birthday, Peg. Now you're great and eight. Love, M. I... Well, I... Henderson Police! Freeze! No! Henry! Get out of there! Ah! Peggy! We have two wounded, and we're in pursuit of the suspect! Henderson police! Freeze! Forrest! Leslie! How's Peggy? She's been cut pretty bad, but we're here now. We'll be okay. God, Marie! Hey, Zara! I need you to look after Peggy. She needs help. Now. We got here just in the nick of time. Where's Marie? She bolted right as we got here. The police are right on her heels. It won't be long now. It's over, Forrest. <sighs> well, folks, it was a long night, but we made it through together. I'm gonna head off to go check on Peggy. This is Ben, Forrest Nash. And it's been a scream. Frequency!